Welcome back to Mario Maker Deconstructed, a series where I recreate course mechanics from Super Mario Maker 2 using the Unity game engine. In this episode, we'll be remaking an essential part of Mario, coins and coin blocks. In just about every Mario game, there are coins you can collect that add to a coin counter. There are also blocks that, when hit, give you a coin. These blocks can be hit multiple times depending on the amount of coins they contain. And in Super Mario Maker 2, there are also big coins that give you 10, 30, or 50 coins when collected. So here are the steps we can follow to recreate these coins and coin blocks in Unity. We need to create coins that, on collision with a player, destroy themselves and add a certain amount to an integer, create a block that adds 1 to the coin count integer when colliding with a player from below, create another integer for the total amount of coins a coin block has and subtract 1 from it each time the block is hit. When this integer reaches 0, change the coin block sprite to a disabled sprite and prevent it from being hit. Create a counter at the top of the screen that shows how many coins you've collected, and finally polish the scene with some animations and sound effects. Before I began, I added new sprites for the coins and coin block to the sprite sheet I created for the last episode, and made a separate sprite sheet with sprites for the 10, 30, and 50 coins. For this project, I will also be using a simple 2D platformer controller that I created for this series using rigid bodies. With that done, I could finally begin. I started off by creating a coin and giving it a 2D box collider set to be a trigger. Then I created two scripts, one for the coin and one to serve as a universal coin counter. I used onTriggerEnter2D in the coin script to destroy the coin upon contact with the player. Then to actually count how many coins the player has collected, I created a public function in the coin counter script called addCoin that adds 1 to an integer called coin count, and if coin count is greater than 100, subtracts 100 from it. Then in the coin count script, I simply called this function before destroying the coin. After that, I added a simple flashing animation to the coin, similar to the one found in Super Mario Bros. 1, and added a sound effect that plays when collecting a coin. I also wanted to create the 10, 30, and 50 coins from Super Mario Maker 2. I figured the most straightforward way to do this was to create a public enum in the coin script that could be set in the inspector to have a type of either 1, 10, 30, or 50. Then I created separate functions in the coin counter script for adding 1 coin, 10 coins, 30 coins, or 50 coins. And I would either call the 1, 10, 30, or 50 coin function from the coin script depending on the enum's type. After that, I created a rotating animation for the big coins. At first, I simply rotated the sprite along its y-axis in Unity, but I didn't really like the look of that. So instead, I decided to make different sprites for each part of the rotation by hand. I also added a different sound effect that would play when collecting a big coin. Now that coins were finished, I could begin working on coin blocks. I started off by creating the block and giving it a 2D box glider. Just like with the switch block in the last episode, I wanted to create a bone based animation of the coin block recoiling when it's hit. So instead of putting the sprite renderer component on the coin block itself, I made an object that's a child of the block and gave it a sprite renderer instead. By animating this child object instead of the actual block, the block's collider won't be moved during the recoil animation, which will prevent any collision issues from happening. After that, I made a script for the coin block and created an integer called total coins. To detect if the block was hit from below, I used onCollisionEnter2D and made an if statement to check if the player collider's maximum y-axis bound was below the block's position and if the x-axis bounds of the player were at least partly within the x-axis bounds of the block. And if this statement was true, I would call the addCoin function in the coin counter script and subtract 1 from the total coins integer. Once total coins reach 0, I would set the block to its disabled sprite and prevent the addCoin function from running when colliding with the player. 
After that, I made a simple bone-based recoil animation for the block and played it on collision with the player. I added a sound effect that plays then as well. The last thing I needed to do was create a coin counter in the corner of the screen that showed your current coin count. To do this, I created a counter with a UI text game object. This text would then be updated to display the current value of the coin count variable each time coins were added to the counter. And with that, I was finished, so I made a simple demonstration level with coin blocks and lots of coins to collect. If you're interested in checking out this project, the link to its GitHub repository will be in the description. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned a few things from it. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future content, feel free to let me know in the comments. That's all, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.